Lisa. It's been ages since I've been in my art journal to really complete a page. Um, this was done last September a long time ago and I think I did a video on this one. Uh, this page I didn't video but I did some, I don't remember doing it. Anyway I stenciled, did some stenciling and I added uh, some circles here that were uh, run through a big shot. I don't have one but a friend does and then added a little bit of color and things to those but I never really finished the page. I didn't put any wording or anything on there so it's still to do and then I have a couple of pages where I had used a stencil and missed it for some other project and I've put the stencil down and then just closed the book on it and pressed and then gotten the ink over on both uh, pages and this one's probably the best uh, example of that and it's the one that I'm going to work with today. I could start a fresh page but I think I want to work with this. I didn't, since I had an art journal in a while, I just flipped through my Pinterest board, which I'll link up uh, in the description for this video, and just got some quick, you know, things that, that really struck me um, as I went along, just some ideas, and I'm kind of combining a whole bunch of those uh, together. There was really two that, that really struck out as me. It was a couple of pages where there had been some book paper, and they had put strips kind of in the middle of the page. I'm going to do the outside edges, since that's where my color is already here, and kind of work from the outside in. And then there was one that had some stamping on it, so I got some stamps out. Um, I find that art journaling, when you go back to it after a long period, it's a little bit like the conversation with a stranger. Um, you, one of the first things you talk about is the weather, and we're having some unusual winter weather. With, like a lot of the country, it's very warm, uh, but I'm sure we're still going to have some cold, maybe not snow, but some cold yet to come, and one of the things we've got to do this week is cover up some fruit trees that are already blooming. So I'm kind of going to go go with the weather theme. I have my book papers here, some stencils, cause, because when I went to get my paints, I saw the modeling paste. I'm not doing anything with modeling paste in a while. So just one thing sort of leads to another as you start art journaling and pulling out your supplies. And I've got a lot of different paints, some distress paints, and then a few uh, other paints in, in the right springy colors here early spring colors as everything is blooming. So, well, one thing I didn't get out was anything to glue this with. So I'm going to pull, to cut, tear some strips of paper and find something to glue them onto my journal. I am using um, disposable gloves. I don't do that all the time, uh, but I've got uh, my husband recovering from some surgery in the house and I need to be able to slip this off and go and attend to anything quickly without having to wash all that gunk off my hands. I'm just arbitrarily tearing some of these strips, some with some design to them. That's one out of a sewing book and then some dictionary prints. I have book paper available over on my Etsy shop. If you're interested in a wide variety of papers that you can use in your art journal or any of your other projects. Some of this, there's some from a pattern, a sewing pattern. And so we'll have those words and designs a little bit in the background when we get done with paint and stenciling. I don't really worry in my art journal about gluing them down quite as well as I do. If it's on a canvas, they're going to be glued really, really well. But in an art journal, it's just making sure they're adhered and then there are going to be other layers and things going over the top of them. If I put too much uh, Mod Podge or um, I think this is um, another type of glue on there, then as I put other layers over, it'll they will look different. I want to leave as much of the raw paper as I can in this case. I'm using light modeling paste with a few stencils. That floral one is a Prima stencil. I've had a long time, I don't remember what it's called. We're just putting a layer of modeling paste that'll be white, and then we're going to add some color over the top of it. I'm going to put paint over mine. Modeling paste also looks really good with um, mists. This is a stencil I made with some silhouette die cuts. I think some uh, borders that I just put together and created my own little stencil. Do a couple of rows of that and then a crafter's workshop stencil. You can tell it's a well used one.
All right, Saul had time to dry. And so we're going to add some paints. I have some Martha Stewart pearl paint. I love those pearl paints. They're beautiful. Some just regular acrylic paint and then some Martha Stewart high gloss in that yellow. And I just want very subtle colors here because we're going for an early spring look. Even though it is February when I'm doing this page. It's become spring here. I got too much pink paint on there so just put a little water on it to lighten it up. And I forgot paper towels. I'm always forgetting paper towels so I grabbed baby wipe. I must be the most inefficient or, or person with baby wipes there are. I can never seem to get them to pick up anything. They just they just do not work for me. They dry out. I just I have no look whatso luck whatsoever with baby wipes. <laughs> I know they're supposed to be just kind of the thing that everybody uses and keeps on their work table if you're doing mixed media, but I have zero success with baby wipes. I've bought so many different ones and they just always dry out. All right, we're adding a little more color here. And I'm one thing I did, I tried to add a little bit of color with the baby wipe. That didn't work so well, but um, I found... I went through some of my stuff hanging around my table here and one of the things I had was a piece of trim with kind of a rough texture to it, some burlap trim, and I just put a little bit of the paint on that and dabbed it on and I did like how that came out. Our journaling is a lot about just playing with things and seeing what you like and how stuff comes along. All right, we're going to do some stamping. I'm going to stamp these snowflakes with archival ink. And they stamped really well. I decided to do them in black so they would show up a little bit more. And then we can add some other color to them. This stamp is from Stamping Up. Um, it's an old stamp set called Kindred Spirits. It will never be for sale on my Etsy shop. If it's for sale, you'll know I'm getting out of crafting altogether because um, this is one of my most used stamps. I just love it. Um, it just it just works for all kinds of stuff. But large um, rubber stamps are just the best things to work with. And so I'm going to use that branch down there that kind of symbolizes the branches that are coming out in bloom. We're going to add a little color to it as well with some markers. I'm doing some silver on the snowflakes. That's an American Crafts marker. I got mine at Tuesday mornings, but I saw them at Hobby Lobby one day. And then this stamp set from, I think, Stampendous has um, some things that look kind of like some of the early spring weeds or <laughs> things that are starting to come out. When I'm working my art journal, I like to work with some of these older markers because I've got different layers here, different things. I've got paint, I've got uh, Mod Podge and or glue and I don't know what it's going to do sometimes to my markers. So if I work with those the archival ones or those old zig markers, those old zig markers I've had since 2001, 2002. If something happens to them, it doesn't matter. They're so old that I don't care. Uh, but they still write and so I use those a lot of times in my art journal. And I'm feeling like I'm near the end of the page, but I still feel like the page needs something. So I'm sort of outlining some of these branches with a marker. Can I emphasize that a little bit? And then I wanted the snowflakes to show up more, so I put some blue um, watercolors behind them, very, very subtly. Now, because I had misting on this page to start with, when I add water, it sort of picks up that color, so they don't stay a perfect blue. And then I decided that what it really needed to tie everything together was just to 
to sprinkle some color across the two pages. And so I took one of my mists, a Tattered Angel's Mist, and sprinkled that across the two pages. So we're getting close here. I still felt like it needed a little bit more, so I got out um, a Faber-Castell, a couple of the black markers, the pit markers in size F and M, and started doing a, just a little doodling. That's not my best event either, but I'm just wanting to add a little bit of um, design here in black, something that will show up a little bit better. And I'm going to color over those with uh, some markers as well. And then we'll see the completed um, journal. I can't say this is the prettiest page I ever did, but I had a lot of fun with it. It was good to get back into just play time and just doing something for the heck of it that nobody, maybe nobody ever sees but me and you guys. <laughs> um, so it was a fun two-pager to do. I hope you enjoyed uh, going along with me. Thanks so much.